fellow citizens and civilians alike. This is your friendly bearded space viking, Eric the Cat McKetton, and his equally friendly AI, Signy, here with the first in what will be a series of space flight instruction videos. Signy, say hello to the viewers. Sigh. Hello, viewers. Signy's in a bad mood today. Today we are covering basic space flight using the mouse and keyboard. I am starting with mouse and keyboard because it is the most common control method out there. If you own a PC, you own a mouse and keyboard. It is not my preferred method, and I highly recommend you experiment with various controls as time passes. However, if you are new to the game, you are probably experiencing it with a mouse and keyboard first. I will be using the Aegis Gladius for all of my instructional videos. The Gladius has classic spaceship and airplane lines, a shape that all should be familiar with, and this should help in visualizing what our control inputs are doing to the ship itself. So, without further ado, let us get into the nitty gritty of basic space flight. I would like to add that I recommend going into your key binding menu, under options, and swapping the roll left and roll right default bindings with the strafe left and strafe right. This gives a more classic WASD feel to steering your ship. If you do this swap, however, you need to also swap them for decoupled strafe and roll. You can find these settings under flight movement. You might also want to consider going into game options and changing flight lead pip reticule to yes. This provides a target lead indicator, a point that flies ahead of the target and tells you where to aim. The traditional default mode provides a projected impact point indicator, a point that flies behind the crosshair and shows you where your round will travel. In general, the default mode is easier for joystick users, while the alternate mode, the one I recommend here, is easier for mouse users. Now, the first control is the basic pitch maneuver. By moving the mouse on the Y axis, or up and down, we move the nose of our ship up and down. Next comes the yaw maneuver. Move the mouse on the X axis, left and right, and the nose of the ship moves left and right. A roll is the final of the basic maneuvers anyone familiar with airplanes or space sims would recognize. The default keys for roll left and roll right are A and D respectively, or Q and E if you rebound them, as I suggested. But here, in United Earth Empire Space, we go beyond just pitch, yaw, and roll. We have what is known as strafing. If you've played any first-person shooters, you are familiar with strafing. Strafing is sliding to the left, right, up, down, and even in Star Citizen, forward and back. We achieve this, if we rebound our keys, by using the WASD method. A and D will strafe left and right, or Q and E by default, and W and S will control our throttle in normal mode and strafe forward and backward and decoupled. Additionally, we strafe up and down by pressing R and F respectively. W will increase our throttle, and thus our velocity, and S decreases it. Double tapping W will set our throttle to 100%, and conversely, double tapping S will set it to zero. Okay, so we know the basics of traditional, atmospheric style flight in Star Citizen. What about the non-traditional flight mode? Also known as decoupled mode, this alternate flight mode is activated by pressing caps lock once. What decoupled mode does is separates, or decouples, the heading or direction our nose is pointed from the bearing or direction our ship is traveling. We demonstrate this by accelerating in one direction until we are at top speed. Notice I am flying this direction at 220 meters per second. Next, I will press caps lock to decouple. As I turn, my ship, now in decoupled mode, continues traveling along the original bearing, regardless of where my nose is pointed. While I'm in decoupled mode, I can change the direction of travel by using the strafe keys, strafe forward and backwards, W and S by default, as well as strafe left, right, up and down, Q, E, R, and F by default, or A and D for left and right if we happen to rebind them. To exit decoupled mode, I simply press caps lock again. The ship's intelligent flight control system will then fire whatever thrusters necessary to push the ship in the direction we are currently facing and thus returning us to an atmospheric style of flight. Before we end our basic coverage of mouse flight control, we should go over boost and space break. Boost is essentially afterburners. Pressing the left shift key will increase the energy output of whatever maneuvering thrusters are currently firing. For example, if I decelerate by holding down S and combine that with the left shift key, I would come to a stop much faster. The reverse is true for acceleration and it applies to strafing and even rolling as well. 
Note that boost consumes fuel. Fuel is recharged over time, but if your fuel reaches zero, you will have little or no boost, and that can be the difference between life or death in a combat scenario. Space brake, or Newtonian brake, controlled by default by the spacebar, negates all current momentum, regardless of direction, without changing the throttle setting. The space brake is very useful for minute course corrections during the heat of battle and to prevent ramming other ships or crashing into asteroids. Furthermore, space brake can also be boosted. Finally, we should go over the two primary control methods unique to mouse and keyboard, absolute and relative mode. Absolute, or the default control mode, is what you see right now. Absolute mode makes the ship follow the cursor. As you see the circle, the line of sight cursor, as it is called, move, the ship will follow. The cursor has the ability to control class two and class four guns, weapons that are articulated and can point independent of the ship's nose. And this gives absolute mode an advantage in aiming. However, there is a bit of a sacrifice in maneuverability, as there is a small delay between moving mouse and your ship responding. Relative mode is what some might call a virtual joystick. By pressing left control plus C, I can toggle between the two modes. As you can see, in relative mode, the LOS cursor disappears and my input is locked to the center of the screen. This gives me a decided advantage in maneuvering, however, I lose my advantage in aiming. If you happen to be flying the ship that has little or no articulated slash weapons, you may find this mode more suited to your combat style. I prefer this mode as I am a joystick pilot by default and this feels more responsive to me. To exit relative mode, simply plus left control plus C again. In the end, it is up to you to decide how your flight style is best represented. I strongly urge you to study the controls, adjusting them as you see fit, and experimenting with the two flight modes. I also highly recommend you practice basic flight in free flight mode or on the race courses. And when you begin to feel comfortable with them, then take a step into Vanduul Swarm to introduce yourself to combat. Once you feel comfortable with Vanduul Swarm, it might be time to try out player versus player combat. I highly recommend the Squadron Battle game mode over Battle Royale. Having wingmen is more useful than you could possibly imagine. So this concludes our introductory lesson. I hope you found it useful in conjunction with the articles, and feel free to post questions on the articles or on the YouTube videos or find me in my Twitch stream. Until next time, citizens, see you in the verse.